What I boiled it down to was, we got about roughly 12,775 days to accomplish what it is we want. You know, and you just start to say, you know, and then again, we're all at a different age here. But to me, it's just putting that mindset. It's creating that perspective because a lot of the times we stop ourselves from doing things. And that's my main point that I want to get on here. It's like, we don't have all the time in the world. A lot of people, we talk about all the things that we want to do, that we want to accomplish. And someday I'm going to do this. And someday I'm going to do that. But how about now? How about right now? How about getting this started and doing this right now? And just the fact that you guys are here tonight. This is the time, is right now, to do what it is you want to do right now and not wait. And that's a quick story real quick. When I was trying to get into the shopping malls, I wanted to set up doing my characters in the shopping malls during Christmas time. I was so freaked out and scared about meeting, uh, talking to the executives, going to the executives, they got their ties, and they got their suit, and their oh my God, they're so dangerous, you know? And I, I was 18 years old and terrified of these people. <laughs> And I was sitting on my couch just moping around and my dad came over to me and said, what are you uh, moping around for? What are you doing? Don't you have that meeting to go to today? And I was just like, yeah, but blah, 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 blah. And he said, what are you so afraid of? What's, he said, what's your fear? What's your biggest fear? And I had you guys write down your fears. One of my biggest fears was getting stabbed. I do not want to get stabbed. I think that would suck for someone to take a knife and stab you. Man, that hurts. Or drown. For someone to just drown in water and just, what a horrible death that would be. That was my fear. My dad says, when you go into that room today, are they going to stab you? No. <laughs> are they going to drown you? No. What's the worst they're going to do? The worst they're going to do is say no. The reality is, in the real world of illustration, in the real world of character design and development, visual development, from what I've been through through the studios, you are always putting yourself in front of the art director, the di a director. They're going to be the judgment, the executives. They're the ones who are going to say, yes, you're good, no, go back to the drawing board, and that's very important just to build that thick skin and that's one of the most important attributes that any artist can have in this industry is a thick skin and that means that you can fail that you can get knocked down and that you can get back up because that's just part of it i love those stories because that's the reality is like anything you can think of anything you can dream of you can make it happen and you can do it if you want to do it it's just about knowing what you want and that's what this is about tonight too is like knowing what it is you want knowing that you want to get into self-publishing knowing that you want to be independent knowing that you want to control your destiny where it is you want to go in life and and it can be with anything and that's the beautiful thing about just coming up with the idea and that's the most yeah, important a little bit frustrated at times we constantly wondering what's going to happen next that's always the forever question What's next? What's happening is next? We, we, it's very rare that we can truly just be here, be present, and just enjoy this time. I'm gonna get more into this, but one of my personal exercises that I do in order just to get me out of my mindset, a lot of the times, you know, you guys know your mind just spinning, 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 is it's a breathing exercise. The other thing is about on the hero's journey, at a point, in order to succeed, you have to die. You will die before you can rise back up and become your better self. And this is what one must go through. And what might that death be? That death may be some serious rejection. Just, I mean, serious rejection. Someone just telling you your artwork is shit and you need to go back to the drawing board. And how are you gonna take that? Are you gonna go and go onto a corner and cry and just give up? Or are you gonna say, damn it, I'm gonna work even harder, even better, okay? I went through my trials and that's what you're gonna be going through in this industry. And all throughout your career are these trials. One of my trials when I was doing caricatures at a young age, I would draw people and they would sit in front of me and look at what I showed them and grab my drawing and just rip it up in front of my face. I would get people sit there and look at the drawing that I did of them and just get off and walk away, okay? That's part of just like this beating that I took, but it made, gave me this thick skin. So whenever I'm working with any client and they tell me, hey, it's the wrong direction, I'm not gonna get upset about it. I'm not gonna be offended by it. And that's what you have to do. 
that's what's gonna push you that much more forward, okay? I'm way back, but I'm gonna skip real quick and just tell you a real crazy story how I even first started to draw. When I was living in England, I was around six years old, I was looking out my bedroom window and saw on the grass out there a sketch, there was a book. And I went downstairs and I went into my backyard and I picked up this book and I opened it and it was an artist's sketchbook, an original sketchbook with an artist had drawn landscape, portraits, all this in my backyard, laying in the middle of the grass in England. No one else in my family draws or anything else, but this was just a, a, a crate. I don't know where it came from, but it was there and it was mine. And from that point, I just carried with that with me everywhere. And that's when I started to really draw. Because we always tend to compare ourselves to other people and make these judgments of our worthiness based on someone else, okay? And if we just relax and don't be competitive, don't worry about that, just be creative. That's your job. You need to be creative. You need to be the one that's going to just have fun, do what you want to do, and stop comparing yourself because this is where I see the real strain and turmoil happening with artists, especially because of Instagram and Facebook. We see all these people, oh my gosh, look at this person. They're working here, they're doing this. Who am I? I'm a nobody, blah, 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 blah. All just these crazy voices really in the head. And just relax. You know what I'm saying? And then you're gonna get out. But every time, think about it. You get in your car, you get on the bus, you get in the train. Why are you doing that? Because you're going somewhere, okay? And that's what you have to know. Where am I going? Why am I even getting in my car? Why am I doing what it is that I want to be doing? Because I want to go somewhere. So rule number one, you have to know what it is you want. What is your destination? Because without this passion, and I'm not talking about playing violin, I'm talking about your passion for what it is, your passion for illustration, your passion for comics, your passion that because you know why passion is important? Because when you do fail, when things do go wrong, you're gonna say, that's okay, that's just a little bump in the road. I'm gonna I still love this, I still wanna do this, and you will find another way. If you are not passionate about it, I tell you, you will give up in a heartbeat. You're gonna be done. Ah, I didn't really care anyway. Ah, I didn't really want it anyway. So. She knew what she wanted. She had a goal, she had a passion, she had a vision, she had an idea. And she just went on that stage and she was so confident because she knew what she wanted. She knew she could sing, she knew she was good. And you guys have all seen it. She had her 15 minutes of fame, you know, but she went up there and she was confident and she, and she, and you saw the reaction of the crowd. Everyone laughed at her. I look at these stories all the time and they become such a motivating factor. And if you can start to channel these little stories and see these things, not just as what they are on YouTube or anywhere else, but go, wow, look at the confidence she had. And she fulfilled her dream. She never got to sing in front of the queen, but I'm sure she will still someday. But look how far she got, you know, and laughed at it and told she couldn't do it. But she believed, she believed she could do it. I'm a huge Beatles fan. I love the story of the, you know, the Beatles were told guitar bands were out. You know, you're not going to become a, you know, how can you do anything? And the beauty is they were persistent. And when you look at all these rock bands and all these different people, and, and it's such an amazing thing to me. I, I feel sometimes there's a lot of artists, you know, in here tonight, and I feel a lot of the times we've put in our head this, this horrible voice in our head that says, you know, don't do these certain things. You're just an artist. You shouldn't do that. And it's like, it's bogus, you know? It's like, it's so important just, again, just to do it, not care about what other people think. I, when I first self-published my big book, I heard the word of mouth of people going, <laughs> who's Silver think he is publishing a big book like that? You know, we blah, 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 blah. It's just like, well, I just wanted to do it. It's just like if the Beatles thought that and they didn't promote themselves and do all that, where would they have been? Where would any of these guys have been if they didn't do all that sort of stuff? So it's so important to have the confidence. What I would like you to do is make a list of what it is that you currently have in your life that makes you happy. That could be your relationship. That could be children. That could be I have a home. That could be I have a place that I, I have food, clothing, shelter. Whatever it may be. You're going to have no interest in it. 
So if you can think and know and just think about that concept, that idea that you know that you love this topic, you love this subject, you breathe this, you live it, you love it, you enjoy it, that's part of the passion. This is part of the thing that you want to incorporate. But if you don't have these, you will never achieve this. You'll always be longing. Okay, so try to meet these needs where you can okay, in, in all different areas of your life. It's like you can't, the spider's not going to eat if he doesn't prepare his web. And this is the exact same thing that you want to do. You want to start preparing. And by being here tonight, you guys have started the first step in preparation and starting to prepare for what it is you want to accomplish and what it is you want to do. Start gathering all the facts that you want to gather. Start looking at different books. Start looking, hearing different people's stories. Whatever it may be, start preparing for this journey that you're about to embark on. This, what we can do in this life, and even more so now because of technology, has opened up so many windows and so many avenues and so many doors. Do I want to just sit and look at what everyone else is doing? Be that kid on the playground with watching these other kids play? on the wheel and the swing and have them have enjoy this and you just sit on the sideline? I choose not to and that's the choice that we get to make. Do we want to join in the dance? Do we want to be a part of this? And the answer is hell yes, you do. You do. And that, you know, takes a lot of things. I think in life we've been given this fear factor, like we, we, we're scared to take these risks. We're scared to do things because, you know, we're paying for all these insurances to protect us in case we get in a car accident, in case our house burns on fire, in case this. Always fear, 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 fear. What if it doesn't work out? What if, what if, what if, what if? And it's starting to get rid of that what if factor and having the courage and saying, you know what, I'm going to go for this and I'm going to do it and I'm going to make it happen. Are you going to get into those deep down dirty little dungeons and you're like, absolutely, you're going to have that. I don't care even if you have the best job or whatever it may be, you will go into those little deep dark places. But it's, again, it's up to you and your mind to pull you out of that space. You know, you know when a little kid's crying and crying because they want something and they'll keep crying until they get it. Not that you want to cry to people, you know, but it's such a big thing is having the persistence and following through and not just making that phone call to someone because you want to find out an answer and they don't get back to you and then you just stop. Eh, they never got back to me. I'm just going to give up, which is a lot of people do. Make that phone call again. Make that phone call again. Be persistent. Do whatever it takes. Keep talking to as many people as you can. Do these sort of things and be persistent because you'll find the more persistent you are, you're eventually going to get the answers you want. And then maybe you're not getting the right answer, but now maybe you're going to look at a different avenue, a different way. Now I'm going to try something else and start all over again with my preparation. Start from scratch again. But as long as, again, you know what it is that you want, you know that you want to self it. When what you should be doing is doing just lots of little ideas. You may do 50, 100 ideas and settle back on the very first idea. That might happen. But what you have to do is just don't let that be the end result when you just the one who's responsible pretty much for everything and this is the beauty of it for me is the self-publishing is having full control and being able to just do this your way how you want to do it and and there's so many different avenues coming up with different ideas so many different ways to explore but you're responsible for everything and it's always going to be the idea always going to be the idea Okay? And why I say that is just because the idea is, it happens to you every single day in your life. If I were to say to myself, I want to get a glass of water right now, that was the idea. And now I'm going to take the action. Everything you do, I'm going to open that door. I need to open that door. I need to go to the bathroom. Everything you do in your life starts with the idea. So why is it the same with your own? A few things, you know. And one of them was I always wanted to grow up one day and talk in front of an audience and inspire them and motivate them and tell them about my journey. And this was at a young age, but I never had my story back then. But all of a sudden through these years, I've built up this story. I also wanted to, because I wasn't a comic book artist, I wasn't, um, you know, I wasn't a filmmaker, I wasn't anything, all I was, I was an artist that just loved to draw. I loved to draw my sketchbook, I had a collection of my drawings, I thought, one day, how cool would it be just to take all my drawings in my sketchbook and put them in a book and have people buy it, you know? And that was a dream that I had when I was like 15, 16 years old, but, and it became a reality. 
and it was all part of, and this is what tonight's all about too, is fulfilling your dreams and making your dreams a reality. A big fish in a small pond. No one else in my high school drew. I, so I was the high school newspaper artist. I was the guy. And oh, Stephen, you can draw because no one else can draw. So of course you're going to be the best. But once you put yourself into this market, you realize, oh my God, there's so many other people better than me. You know, I hate to become dangerous. This is but then again, sometimes the lack of knowledge or experience can make you do things that you just, you know, just go for it. Because I don't know what's right, what's wrong, you just do it. So that's what I did and I took it to some comic book stores. I remember, you know, House of Secrets in Burbank actually. And I took it and I said, hey man, I, you know, I got this book, my name's Steven Silver. I've kind of come out with this book, would you mind carrying me? Flips through it, he goes, yeah, it's cool, but 10 bucks. You know, people don't, you know, you know, people are buying comics for three bucks, you know, and so, all right, I'll take some. So I think he took maybe about 20 of them, you know, from me um, at the point, you know, and I sold it to him for half off for like $5 a copy. So he was paying $5 for this. And that's, you know, when he buys a comic book, he's only paying a buck, you know, maybe. So he took a risk on me and he took it. And it's pretty much within two days later, he calls me up, dude, I need some more. Of the school, the counselor called up my parents and told them, You are wasting our time and your money having him in our school because he's just drawing on everything. He doesn't even want to be here. You know, I was getting F's, 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 and I'm just drawing on everything, and that's when I decided I'm out of here, and that's when I started doing characters. But my philosophy was always to fall forward. That's what I'm going, there's no falling back. You need something to fall back on. If you don't have this degree, this education, you're going to be screwed. No, but my mindset was, I'm just going forward. What do I want to be? I just went out the window. My biggest fear in life was, what if I don't make a living at this? What if I don't get hired by people? What if I don't become the artist that I sort of want to be? And then I realized when I was traveling and saw so many people living in poverty, yet why were these people happy? A lot of people I met, and they had this joy and stuff. And it was something that people hadn't really done before, which was kind of exciting because there's a lot of big companies that did it, but just for some individual guy to take all his own artwork and shove it in a book and sell it was just, again, I wasn't following any rules. I wasn't following what other people had done. I was just trying to be different. I was trying to be creative. And that's always my motto is... That's a very important question to ask yourself. Does this feel natural to you? Because otherwise, if it doesn't, you're resisting, you're fighting it. And I see this over and over and over again. And One is to be prepared. You know, it is such a huge fact. And I am an Eagle Scout. And I did learn how to be prepared. And that really was a training ground for me as a Boy Scout and just learning all the different, having to accomplish all these different goals to try to get all these different merit badges and everything else, but prepared me for many different things within my, within my career. Things, but I just want to let you know and about being prepared for this journey and this venture. And this is what this is. This is an exciting, for me, an exciting journey, an exciting venture and an adventure into a new realm that you guys haven't tapped into before that you can all do and you can all accomplish and you can all do it and there's nothing stopping you. And it's not natural and they resist it and they fight it. So that's the thing, don't just do things just because you think you're gonna get work in it or a job. It doesn't feel natural, do you enjoy this? Are you having fun? Briefly, but uh, if you haven't heard it, this was something that kind of hit me. I was at my son's Boy Scout camp and they were bringing out all these animals and they were talking about their life expectancy. This animal lives two years, this animal lives five years. I'm all, man, that's so short. Yet during that time, you know, they pretty much, uh, you know, they, they find their mate, you know, they find their, their home, their, their, their food, they do everything. They become grandparents, parents, grandparents, everything, all within this little time span. And then that's it. And then it's over. You know, it's gone. So I realized, man, how many years do we have, you know, as humans? And I started to think, you know, I'm going to start looking into that, you know, just a bit. So then I came and I was looking at statistics. And you can see from 1840 to just that's just 2000, how our longevity of life has gone up to about 80 years of life. I started wanting to break it down more than that. I want to start to get down to days, you know. 29,200 days from the time you're born to 80 years old. That's what we have. That's our time frame. Self-discovery is going to make you better at what you do. Why? You have to keep 
trying to discover these things, not waiting just for other people to tell you. Just do it for yourself. Don't wait to be chosen. Throw that ego, whatever else it is you have out the window. Don't feel that you're so important that someone needs to approach you. And if they don't approach you to publish your book, then huh, huh, you know. It's like, get rid of that. You, this is your opportunity it's just to do it on your own. Don't wait. That's the thing where people will wait. I'm a great artist. I'm just waiting for someone to come to me, knock on my door, publish. You know, you'll keep waiting. I mean, look, Grant, yeah. There's exceptions to the rule. Some people do get approached, and of course, and it's a great thing. But I'm just saying, I just want that mentality, that mindset of just don't don't sit around and wait, you know, and that's that's the bottom line. Tell me how to do it, okay? I'll tell you how to do it. I teach them how to do it. I just explain to them. But that's it. They don't go anywhere else beyond that looking how to do it. And what they do is they fail. Because all they've been doing is waiting for other people to give them the answers all the time. And they're not doing enough of their own self-discovery and they realize that, well, maybe this was harder than I thought. Maybe it's, I, I'm not a people person. I don't want to talk to people. You know, I've met people like that. I got to do something with the mail order business. And so he went to a football game, like the following day, you know, the, in the next couple days, because he loved football. There was a guy sitting in the audience and he turns around, this guy turns around and looks at him with his Billy Bob teeth and goes, hey, how do you like my teeth? And the guy goes, what the heck? And he goes, hey man, I made these, I'm a dental student. And the guy goes, click, wow, that mail order, I've been wanting to do this, this guy does these teeth, I'm gonna start these teeth. And all of a sudden, he became best friends with this guy and they started this huge mail order business and this guy's, you know, $50 million later. You know. Stop worrying about where you're going to be a year from now, five years from now, ten years from now. You have no idea. And you will drive yourself insane. Okay, so that's why I say forget about your future. Just set goals for yourself and know that those goals are constantly going to change. Now, and then I started breaking it down to where a lot of us usually don't maybe start maybe our careers, maybe to, until we start in our late 20s, our 30s, 40s. So from the time you're born to the time you're 30 years old, I broke it down, you've got to take away 10,950 days. That's gone. That's your growth. That's where you're learning. That's where you're getting your experiences. That's where you're starting to explore. That makes you better. Having a vision, you have to know where it is you want to be, where you want to go. Okay? It's just, it's like people go to the moon. You're not going to the moon without a vision or even a mission of going to the moon. You have to know what that's going to be. Know where you want to be, and that's going to constantly change. Remember that. It's going to constantly change. This is not a life sentence. Whatever you choose to do is not a life sentence. It does not mean you're going to do this for the rest of your life. I was a character, I was a caricature artist that became a character designer, that became a teacher, you know, that became a book publisher. I did so many things, just one thing to the next. It's not going to be forever. Whatever How many hours a day are you going to invest, you know, in your product here? You know, it's very important. You know, don't make all these excuses. You're too busy and all this sort of stuff. I mean, I when I first published my very first book, I was working full time at an animation studio. At nighttime, I was working full time on another show. We had two little babies, two little kids. You know, and during all this time, I mean, you can make excuses up the yin yang, left and right, why you got no time. But there's time. You just got to make that time. You know, really, you just, it's all about time management, finding those little spots, those little areas. Um, people always tell me, I got no time to draw. I say, well, what about at lunchtime on your lunch break, you know, from the studio? Why don't you go sketch? Why don't you go to the coffee shop? Why don't you go here? Why don't you go there? There's no excuses. I mean, you can make excuses. Patience. Everything is just having, believing in the timing. Timing is so much better. <coughs> Even in your mind, how many times have you stressed out about someone not responding back to your email? Maybe a client or something else. Oh my God, they hated it. It's not going to happen. This might happen. Blah, 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 blah. And all of a sudden, they go, hey, no, that was great. Thanks. Blah, blah, blah. Oh my God. Why did I stress myself out? Why did I do that to myself? So trust me, just have a little bit that patience and it goes a long way. And another word that I write on my hand is called amor fati, uh, just a uh, love of fate. To love a fate, whatever fate brings. Yesterday I was at the airport, I got off the plane from 
uh, from uh, Alicante, Spain. I was supposed to just jump off that plane at 7 o'clock, 7.30, be on my plane to Portugal. I go and I look at my ticket and I'm rushing and I realize my plane, the woman made my flight for 11.03 at night. I'm like, oh my God, I gotta be here for the next three, four hours sitting here. But at that time, I'm more fatigued. This is fate. I'm just gonna sit here. I'm not gonna oh, God, give myself heart attack, heartburn, you know, stress. It's like, this is it. So stop resisting. Don't encourage to do things that you are afraid of, that are scary, that courage to go talk to that person you're afraid of, that courage to reach out to that studio that you're afraid of, that you don't think's gonna hire you. Whatever it may be, put in 16 years, 16 years pitching that to different studios, rejection, 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 all of a sudden, lo and behold, there's a new executive in the office. And all of a sudden, that executive goes, this is brilliant, this is great. And that's what happens, people change jobs. Okay, so just because you have your idea and someone says no now, it is not going to be the no forever. Just keep you aim for what it is you want. You plant the seed. I'm planting my avocado tree seed. Boom, it's in the ground. That is my aim to grow an avocado tree. What does that avocado tree do? It creates. And eventually creates those avocados for me. And that's what you're going to do. You're going to be creating. And what is that avocado tree? Every season after season, it maintains it, okay? It just keeps going. And keep in mind that we all have seasons. You can have seasons. You do not need to be going a thousand miles an hour all the time. <laughs> just like a tree, it's gonna have its seasons, or so can you. And through that maintaining, and in order to maintain, we have to keep creating. And look at every single product on the market. What did Apple do? They aimed to create an iPhone, okay? And what do they do every single time? All they do is maintain it with updates and updates and updates and new creation. You can get a dishwasher, Whirlpool, they make it, that was their aim, they created it and now they keep upgrading it. That's all we're doing, that's the life cycle, right? So aiming, creating, maintaining, and that's how we're gonna do it through creation, okay? Um, here again, so we wanna decide what we wanna do, we want to plan for what we want to do. We got to prepare for what we want to do. We got to execute. We got to believe, and we got to follow up and through. And this is all we're going to do is repeat back to number one. Again. Every single thing you guys do, from I'm doing this today, um, the two years from now, I might be doing that. But you're going to constantly go through the same thing. You're going to decide what you want to do. I'm going to plan. I'm going to prepare. I'm going to execute. I'm going to follow up and through, and then repeat. And again, on everything that you end up doing on YouTube. But um, I just want to share with you this poem that I wrote, and it goes like this. All I have ever done is enjoy what I ever do. My mind was open, my mind was clear. I did not stop to think of fear. I open up my mind, think of an idea, put it into action, and see what will appear. It can never be a failure because I learned along the way. If I did not succeed, I'll try another day. Stay calm and smile, enjoy the things you do. Life will get much better as long as you are you.